if you can call right now and get a price within two minutes, a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need, 866-88-BIBLE. That's 866-88-BIBLE, 866-88-BIBLE. The Shaw 101 FM, New Berlin's choice for news talk radio, streaming 24-7. It's great to be here to speak directly to the woke mob. The liberals have basically made up this whole agenda that guacamole is made of avocados. It's not the truth. Tick tock tee off. This is it. Scooby boo boo. Scooby doo. Moving Wisconsin forward, one joke at a time. This is Kristen Bry with As Goes Wisconsin. Yada, yada, yada. Hello, Wisconsin! What was your first job? More importantly, how old were you when you were first employed? 844-967-2789. And I'm not talking about babysitting. I'm not talking about mowing your neighbor's lawn or shoveling. I'm like actually applied for a job, got hired, had a W-2. How old were you? 844-967-2789. And I'll tell you in a second why I'm bringing this up. But Jane, how old were you? I want to say I was I was either 15 or 16. And I got my first real job at an A&W. You got a really cute outfit? Oh, yeah, it was orange. It's just so my color. <laughs> but no, I think we've talked about this before. No rollerblades. No roller skates. I was not on skates. roller skates. But I did, yes, I did dump an entire tray of root beer floats onto a customer's lap who was sitting in the car. So, yeah, that was memorable. Didn't you also give, like, crank numbers or something like that? Yeah, we would put fake phone numbers inside of cute boys' hamburgers and then listen on the intercom as they bit into their hamburger to see what they would say. <laughs> Yeah, I was a great employee, Kristen. Great employee oh. at 15. Exactly what 15 year olds should be doing on their first job, right? Uh, I actually think my first employment was an acting gig instead of. I then, I think my very first job where I like was hired was a seasonal worker at Pier One, so retail, and I would have been 17. But I think right before that, I had booked a job on Judging Amy. Oh, cool. We were been in LA. And I'm pretty sure, and prior to that, when I was living in Wisconsin, it was like babysitting and stuff right. like that. But I wasn't actually like, didn't have a job or like a part-time job. And so we'll say 17 was my, how old I was at my first job. And we, but I would love to hear from you. Like, what is the right age to start working? And I'm bringing this up because it's one thing to have a part-time job, which I think is good. Sometimes you need it. Sometimes it teaches work ethic. Largely it does both. Uh, but more importantly, should they, should people as young as 14 in Wisconsin be serving alcohol out of all the jobs they could have as a 14 year old to teach work ethic, to make some extra money, responsibility, responsibility, should that include serving alcohol, which there is a new bill that the co-sponsors say creates a simple solution to the food industry workforce shortage, which would change the age or lower the age of employees to be able to serve liquor, not at the bar, but to tables. Right. And I have a lot of feelings about the bill, a lot of feelings about the efficacy of does this actually is this the fastest way to solving this problem? But I also just thought it was interesting as far as kid minors and working and what we expect of them now, what we expected of ourselves, what kind of jobs are appropriate for teenagers. And so I thought I'd open it up and see what, what your first job was and how old you were when you first got employed. 844-967-2789. And, you know, this bill is, it's far from getting passed. It has, it's just been introduced. It's not something that it's even come out of committee, made it through both assembly and Senate, let alone uh, sitting on Eber's desk. So it's a, it's a ways away. But this has happened in other states already. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of different ways I feel like this conversation can go as far as where, what this is, 
what it means. Does it solve? Is this the fastest way to solve what they what the the co sponsors are saying, which is addressing the labor shortage? And I would say no, because how many fourteen to seventeen year olds are working in restaurants that serve alcohol? That they're just not still just delivering the drinks. Like, even if they're not supposed to, do you really, are they really just like, well, I can't touch that drink. And so I don't know if this, does this open up? There's a bunch of kids working in restaurants, like who would work in restaurants if they could serve liquor. Like, I just don't know if this gets at the root of the problem they're trying to solve versus there's probably some, like a handful of taverns or restaurants are like, this is annoying when we have kids who are 17 and younger who can't do this part of their job. But right. to 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 veil this or promote this as a way to address the labor shortage in the food industry, I feel like it's a little bit disingenuous. 844-967-2789. That's 844-96-PARTY. What was the first job you ever had and how old were you? Carrie from the town of Polk. Thank you for joining us, Carrie. What do you want to say? Hi. Um I was 16. I was paid $1.60 an hour. And because um, I'm very old, I'm 68. <laughs> and <laughs> it was at the Gourmet House in South Milwaukee. And I can say that because it's been shut down forever. The Gourmet and, House? Uh, was, think, was the Gourmet House a restaurant? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, we used to work 50, 60 hours a week. And that was on, on weekends and, well, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. And it would be, like, grueling. And if you think that 16, 17-year-olds can't find the alcohol yes. at a restaurant that they're working at, <laughs> that's just silly. <laughs> if they paid a little more, they, yeah, if they paid a little more, they wouldn't need 14-year-olds. Exactly. Well, and I think that's the point is there, and it's not that you shouldn't work hard. It's not that it's a big deal if they're delivering drinks. It's more of like, if, is this actually getting at the root cause of what you're trying to solve as far as making these jobs more appealing versus just making it easier to hire younger and younger and younger? Right. If, if you're 14, what your minimum wage is like a gold mine. But if you're trying to support a family or, or yeah, I had people who worked with me who were just trying to support their family. And this is just mean spirited to say 14 year olds can do it. Well, and Carrie, my other, my other thought was if I had a 14 year old daughter, I do not want her serving drinks to a bunch of people, no. even if they're sitting down. I'm sorry, but I don't. I think it's bad enough exactly. that, that our 16 and 17 year old girls have to deal with some of the, uh, Naughty things that happen. <laughs> I saw you pause. Or you can't well, keep yourself from saying what you wanted to say. Just, I I don't know that that is a good idea. I know. I don't either. And I had the fortune. I, I lived in South Milwaukee, and everybody knew everybody else, so there wasn't a problem with um, misbehavior. Getting, you know, yeah, behavior. Although I did walk in the basement and catch one of the chefs taking a shower. <laughs> which was really still and still locked in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a core memory at this point. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Now I'm going to have it in there for the, <laughs> for the day. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Thank you so much, oh, Gary. God. We really appreciate you checking sure. in. 844-967-2789. What was your first job? How old were you? Gary from Sussex is joining us. Hey, Gary, what's going on? Okay. Uh, Jane, I worked for my uncle and my grandpa. So this was a family business. And we were in construction, like cement business. So on Saturdays, I would go and help them pick up forms. And I'd scrape the forms that they use to form the concrete with a flat shovel. And I made uh, a nickel an hour doing that. A nickel wow. An hour. A nickel an hour. And then some old guy 
was uh, standing there watching me. And my grandpa was just, you know, harassing me a little bit, saying, come on, Gary, put your shoulder, in, you know, like a grandpa would do, go harder. While some old guy starts yelling at my grandpa, telling him, there's child labor laws out there. And then he, when he told him how much I was making, the guy started screaming and hollering. And I told the guy, I said, mister, please don't yell at my grandpa. I want this job because I can buy five packs of bubble gum uh, and you know, baseball cards with the bubble gum. And to me, 25 cents at the end of the day was a lot of money. I could buy candy bars and everything. Then when I was 10, then I worked full time during every day during the summertime and, uh, and then so on and so on until finally I, uh, my body kind of broke down by the time I was like 25 and I ended up getting a different job. And now I own a heating and air conditioning business. But, um, so I didn't have any W-2s until I think I was like 14. But you were working. But like you, were you were working. And so I guess looking back yeah. at it and your experience, would you, do you think it's a good thing? Would you want, would you have your kids do it? Like is, that seems, that seems really young to be doing labor, but it's also, it's a family business. So I understand kind of the dynamics there Our versus kids. you going out and getting sent to, to work for someone else at like eight or nine. But I like looking back at it, especially if your body gave out by the time you're 25, would you do it again? Well, well n- not in the concrete business. Now my okay. brother is a year and a half younger than I am and he's still doing it. He has his own business and his body's really broken down. Me, I'm in pretty good shape. I, I do Ironman triathlons and stuff like that, but I was concerned when I got married. My wife was really worried about me, uh, you know, coming home at night, just busted, you know. So my body did recover. But the thing is, my mom, if I wanted a bike or if I wanted clothes other than underwear, my mom said, you have to buy your own. My mom was tough. My mom was very loving. But because of that, taught me to have a really good work ethic and all of my brothers and siblings and sister, we all have our own businesses and we're all doing really, really well in, you know, in life because my mom taught us, the, you know, if you work hard, you can, you know, make it. And that's what I want to tell other people. You work harder than other people and you will thrive. If you want to just sit there and just go along with the ride and, you know, whatever, you're just going to, you'll never make it to the top. Thank you so much, Gary. We are coming up against a break. 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. How old were you and what was your first job? This is As Goes Wisconsin. We'll be right back. Kill me, that's what it's coming to when the mother has kids like you. Oh, chicken soup that I made for you. I'm going to take it easy. <laughs> The four most dreaded words. My computer is down. Oh boy, that bites. Remain sane. PC and Pat together will fix the pain. Rated number one PC doctor in Southeast Wisconsin. Great service, great rates, and fast service with no trip charge. Experts with PCs, laptops, network servers, protection, backups, and can even help you remotely. Click PC at back.com or call us at 262-706-3235. That's 262-706-3235. Remain sane. We fix the pain. Real Chili's been serving up mouth-watering goodness to the people of Milwaukee since 1931. Their famous secret award-winning chili recipe is the same as it was back then and a local treasure. From lunch to dinner to late-night breakfast, Real Chili has you covered. And now you can bring the Real Chili to your next party, tailgate, wedding, or office gathering with their unbeatable catering options. And don't forget about their Real Love Party Packs, perfect for small groups, and pick up from their two convenient locations, downtown Milwaukee and near Marquette University campus. Visit them at realchili.com. That's realchili.com. This is Pat Greitlow from Up North News Radio. On the air, online, or on demand, make it a point to catch the first word on Wisconsin news, sports, and more weekday mornings from 6 to 8 all across the stations of the Civic Media Radio Network. It's easy to listen to your favorite local radio station anytime. Download the Civic Media app from the Apple or Google Play Store, then listen live or whenever you want from anywhere for free. Here's your updated forecast on the Shaw. 
chance for scattered rain showers this afternoon, otherwise cloudy. High temperatures reach up to 47. Northwest winds 15 to 20 miles an hour. Lows dip down to about 31 tonight, partly cloudy. High of 55 tomorrow, a mix of clouds and sun. Warmer Thursday and Friday with highs in the mid-60s. Chance for scattered showers Friday. For Civic Media, I'm meteorologist Eric Height. Currently, it's 46 degrees. A progressive voice from Beaver Dam to Kenosha. WAUK 540 AM. Always streaming at WAUKradio.com. Child labor's back in a big way. Child labor in a totally not evil USA. Hey, kids, if you know what's good, you'll sacrifice your childhood to save the economy. Child labor. What do we know? Minimum wage has been held back for decades. The workforce is pushing back. What do we know? Employers pay low and say no one wants to work anymore like they always have. There was a 37% rise last year in child labor law violations. So several states, well, no, they loosened regulations on child labor. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I am Kristen Bry. She is Jane Manair. That was a song I fittingly found yesterday, not even knowing I was going to talk about it. This we were, we were going to start here today on the show uh, by Emerson Brophy. Found that on TikTok. It's pretty good. And we'll talk m more after this segment. And I don't, I struggle because the bill that we're talking about that got proposed is basically saying, 14 to 17 year olds can deliver serve alcohol in bars and restaurants so long as the patrons are not sitting at the bar but seated at a table right and this last night i think stirred reactions and it stirred reaction as far as well what is this we will now if if this were to pass wisconsin not shockingly would be the only state that lets 14 year olds deliver alcohol <laughs> which you know ties into our you know, reputation <laughs> as far as our drinking. Get them started young. And and I get and this so and I get the work ethic and I, we're asking people at home what how old were you when you got your first job? And not babysitting, not like making money, you know, kind of by Shoveling just getting people and... giving you cash to do some some right. work versus like I applied for I applied for a job, I got the job. And it was this is how old I was when I had that job. And so we're going to read some of your texts. And uh, I put this on Twitter, so we'll read some of those. And so it's not that I'm against teenagers working, but it, there is a line, right? And across the country, as that song playfully depicts, they're loosening late child labor laws across the country. And so we'll get more into the details of that in the next segment. But... Uh, Want to first ask you, how old were you when you got your first job? 844-967-2789. That's 844-96-PARTY. 414 says, I got my first job. I was 13. I detasseled corn in northern Indiana for the entire summer. Detasseled corn. Does, so, is, that how, is detasseling different than just peeling corn? Well, you put, I think you just pull the silk off the top, right? I don't know. <laughs> the most I I that was a chore at my house, which is like go in the summer because we had corn in the cob almost every night when it was in season. Go peel the corn outside so you don't get the silk everywhere in the house. Right. But I don't I didn't know what the difference of de de tasseling versus peeling would be. Well, it sounds it, more it sounds more official. I think it's kind of the same thing. Okay. Eight four four nine six seven two seven eight four eight. Yeah, eight four four nine six party. It's shorter that way. It's shorter that From way. From the two six two, is there a group of people who care less about the well being of Wisconsin than the Tavern League and GOP lawmakers? Eighth graders serving liquor, terrible DUI laws and punishments. There is no end to the depravity. And I think that's the thing that it's like. I just come back to this bill, feeling like, is this really that big of a problem? Because I, it's hard for me to imagine that if there's 14 to 17 year olds who are already working in bars and restaurants, that everyone kind of just is like turn an eye and just let them deliver a beer from the bar to the table. And that this is really getting in the way of how many people are 
choosing to work at a bar and restaurant or it's getting in the way of a 14 or 17, like so 14 to 17 year old. Like, well, I'm not going to apply for that job because I can't do it. Or unless it's that there's so many 14 and 17 year olds applying to work at restaurants and the restaurants and bars are saying, well, we can't hire you because you can only do part of the job. You can only bus, you can only whatever, but you can't deliver drinks. And so I just don't, I'm just not convinced that this moves the needle in the same way. But I'm also just interested, I think it's just an interesting question of how old we were when we first got our first jobs. And so on uh, Twitter, I put the same question out and you can always follow us on Twitter at As Goes Wisconsin. Uh, I got one said at 11, delivered the Milwaukee Journal. I am I bet there were a lot of kids who did that. A lot of kids who I think had a paper route. Oh, yeah. Um, 15, lifeguarding at the YMCA. Okay. 15, I did clerical work, mostly filing, but also invoicing receivables for the accounting department of local chain of hardware, for a local chain of hardware stores. S 16, worked at a local candy store. That seems like a good That's first job. That's not a job. bad job. Uh, 15, worked at Waukesha County at the Expo. 17, sporting goods at Shopco. 14, catering waitstaff and food prep. Oh. 15, food pizza, like for a uh, pizza frozen custard place. And so like, I think all of these, the only, the one that has stood out the most that kind of sounds the most like me is uh, a woman named Joy Powers said that she got, uh, her first job was at 12 and she played Katie slash Kirsten in Circle of Friends, an American Girl musical. And oh. I wrote back, I said, you got paid to do that at 12? <laughs> She must have been good. And so she wrote back. She said, I did. I had short gigs before that, but American Girl was my first regular job. I worked there until I was 15 when I started to feel weird about pretending to be a 10-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> Although I never actually sized out of the costumes. I'm still a stately 5'2". Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> hey, we have an answer to uh, detasseling, by the way, from the 414. I wrote on a machine that went between the rows of corn and I pulled the tassels off. This was hardcore labor. Wow. And in the summertime and, you know, tractors now are so sophisticated yeah. that you have shade and all those things. It may not have been like that back in the day. Because what was your job after A&W? I was a thistle picker on the bee line <laughs> at a cannery. But I was, I was 18. That was the summer before I went to college. Could, it was, did it pay more than A&W? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I don't recall specifically. But I, I'm pretty sure it paid more than A&W. And after A&W, actually, I worked at a local pharmacy at the, they still had a soda counter. That's fun. So. All right. We're going to keep talking about this through the break. So what was your first job? How old were you when you got it? 844-96-PARTY. We'll be right back. What do we know? Employers pay low and say no one wants to work anymore like they always have. There was a 37% rise last year in child labor. WAUK 540 AM. New Berlin's choice for news talk radio. Streaming 24-7 at WAUKradio.com. CBS News Brief. Nearly 300 arrests in the U.S. and other countries as authorities target an online marketplace for fentanyl and other drugs. Attorney General Merrick Garland. This represents the most funds seized and the highest number of arrests in any coordinated international action led by the Justice Department against drug traffickers on the dark web. The Biden administration will send 1,500 U.S. troops to the southern border ahead of next week's expiration of a pandemic policy that forced migrants out of the country. CBS's Cammie McCormick. These troops will not be interacting with migrants, but the plan is to free up DHS agents to do law enforcement work during what is expected to be a busy time in the months ahead. 11,000 TV and film writers are on strike. The writers, in a nutshell, feel that the streaming revolution has really left them behind. Matthew Bellany of Puck Media. CBS News Brief. I'm Steve Kathan. WAUK 540 AM, Brookfield's choice for news talk radio. Streaming 24-7 at WAUKradio.com. For Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what you need to know. 
Republican state lawmakers start reworking Governor Evers' budget proposal today. The Budget Writing Joint Finance Committee plans to finish Wisconsin's new two-year state budget in a few weeks. Republicans are expected to cut most of the governor's $104 billion proposal he put on the table in February. More people in Wisconsin could get into state parks for free. A committee of the state Senate is holding hearings today on plans to offer free admission to certain fourth graders, anyone with an Every Kid Outdoors pass, and to everyone in Wisconsin on Earth Day. The state already offers a free fun weekend that lets everyone in Wisconsin into state parks for free on the first weekend in June. In sports, the Brewers are at Colorado tonight. Freddie Peralta starts for Milwaukee. I'm Terry Bell, and this is Civic Media News. Hey everybody, how we doing? I'm Charlie Barons inviting you to join me Saturdays and or Sundays at noon. It's a horse apiece, whatever you decide. Uh, we're doing the Cripes cast where we talk to people for and or from the Midwest. And it's more fun than a six pack of Jolly Good. Okay, the pride of Random Lake that Jolly Good is. Anyway, it's on your Civic Media station and the Civic Media app. And do me a favor, yeah, tell your folks I says hi. Okay, real good. Have fun on the lake this summer. Treat yourself and find the watercraft you want at Action Boathouse Showroom just south of 59 on 164 in Waukesha. Check out the fun and personal sea dew switch with its powerful Rotex Gen engine. Action Boathouse Showroom also has a selection of luxury fishing boats or pontoon boats from seven top USA manufacturers. The team at Action Boathouse Showroom is excited to help you launch into the sun this season and onto the lake. Action Boathouse Showroom just north of 59 on 164 in Waukesha. What's for dinner? Burgers? After last week? No thanks. Avoiding foods due to fear of diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools? It may not be just stomach issues. It could be EPI, or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. EPI can cause uncomfortable symptoms because it's a condition where the pancreas doesn't release enough digestive enzymes to break down food. But EPI can be managed. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor about your symptoms. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abby. Larry, it's your mom. Did you know the Civic Media Network covers the whole state of Wisconsin? They can help your business get the word out. Whether you want to reach a smidge of folks or just want the whole kit and caboodle, call 608-819-8255. Okay then, bye. What was your first job and how old were you when you got it? And not necessarily babysitting or lawn mowing, but like you applied for a job and you got the job. And we're talking about this because they there's co-sponsors, Republican lawmakers in the legislature who would like to change the age uh, of how old you have to be to serve alcohol in the state of Wisconsin and allow 14 to 17 year olds to do it for seated customers for seated customers not customers so they couldn't bartend right but yes. they, it's for wait staff and so it's basically saying for wait staff they can deliver drinks from the bar to patrons and it's just brought up a lot of conversation as far as i think on the one hand there is conversations around already wisconsin's reputation and our issues with alcohol we should say we are one of, I remember this was fall of 2021 and it would be interesting to see updated data, data on this, but nationally underage drinking is declining across the, across the country. Well, that's good news. Not in Wisconsin. <laughs> and so I, I helped out with a small talks campaign from the department of health, Wisconsin's department of health. They were doing a small talks campaign showing that, one of the things that really curbs alcohol, underage drinking, is having conversations with your kids about drinking and not just kind of avoiding the topic in general. And so I did a couple of TikToks talking about that and whatever. And I talked about, I'm pretty sure the first time I drank was summer going into freshman year. So I would have been 14. So like we have a lot. We already have teenagers and who drink a fair amount in the state. We drink a lot as a state in general. And is that kind of like, well, what's the big deal then? 
it's going to happen anyway. It's, it's going to happen anyways. Just let them ha- do that. Have this be part of the job if they're going to be working at a bar or restaurant. Anyways, is it something that we should be aware of? Is it also the conversation around labor shortage in general? And is the way to save <laughs> to to address the labor shortage just to uh, make the laws easier for younger and younger people to work? And I'm just interested where you fall on this as far as like what is your gut knee jerk reaction when you hear there's a new proposal to allow 14-year-olds, so that's eighth graders or freshmen in high school, to be serving alcohol. Out of all the jobs they could have as a 14-year-old, like, is that what you want your 14-year-old doing? 844-967-2789. That's 844-96-PARTY. We uh, have a text from the 608. I was eight years old in Milwaukee in the 80s, helping my father deliver the Milwaukee Journal papers in downtown Milwaukee, the Sunday Journal back then was four inches thick and weighed five pounds because of all the ads and coupons. We had a 250 plus newspaper route. I also had a small Sentinel route where I lived until I was about 12. Wow. A lot of kids, a lot of kids did that. Yeah. And, but it wasn't serving alcohol. And what do you see as the difference? That was something you could do before school. I guess you did, you you did, well, there was a morning and afternoon paper. So you did your paper route twice a day, mm-hmm. but you're still home, I would think, by seven o'clock. Whereas if you're working in a restaurant and you're 14 years old, you could be working until 10. Yeah. Right. Or on the week. I mean, I guess unless you're working the weekends. On the weekends. And I just, is it, a, it's, does it become a slippery slope as far as loosening? The rules in the name of addressing the labor shortage, does it put us in a position where instead of debating, proposing, passing legislation like raising the minimum wage, addressing child care costs, exactly. like a lot of the other things that help working adults have better working conditions or get people back to work in other ways – that the solution is, well, we'll just get more kids to work. <laughs> like it doesn't, it just doesn't compute for me, I would say. But if someone has a good argument as far as like, the only argument I kind of see is this is potentially already happening. Cause it's hard for me to imagine, especially at mom and pop type restaurants or taverns up North and stuff like that. If you're 15 being a waitress, you might, it's not like you might just be delivering the beer from the bar anyways. Anyway, right. And so it's like, why do we need legislation on this? Like, so no one's been able to explain to me how much of an issue this really is and how like ubiquitous it actually is. Well, and I find it interesting, you know, we have labor shortages in all different kinds of areas, certainly not just in restaurants. Yes. So are we going to have a whole bunch of Doogie Housers now? And we have doctor shortages. We have nursing shortages. We have teacher shortages. We have all kinds of shortages that at least I don't think 14 year olds are going to be able to step in and fill. No. (laughs) So as you said, this is not a full fledged solution for the problems we're having with our labor market. And it is not because people are so lazy that they don't want to work. No, not at all. 844-967-2789, 844-967-2789. party How old were you when you got your first job? What was it? And what do you think about 14-year-olds being allowed to deliver drinks in restaurants to customers sitting at a table? 262, my first job at 15 was peeling bark off of trees so it would be ready for the paper mill. Paper mill job as a teenager. That sounds tough. Yeah. That's... That's thistle picker on a pea line. Kind of tough. <laughs> Peeling bark. I can imagine your fingernails were just wrecked. <laughs> we're not necessarily spending a lot of money on manicures. Uh, probably then. not. I'm sure you had tools. I, I doubt that they had to yeah, do just it just with their peel it. just with their nails. But I'm sure. And now I'm sure they have machines that do that, which right. is interesting to think about. Yeah. Uh so I wanted to run through. Do we have any more texts for now? Not for now. Um, we, uh, 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 More Perfect Union, which is an organization that's a media company or like an independent media that is um, focuses on working people, working people issues. And they did a whole thread on this as far as talking about the slippery slope of 
child labor. And Wisconsin's not on here yet, thankfully. Yet. Yet. But I just thought I would run through in the last couple months what bills have been getting proposed and passed across the country. So in Arkansas, uh, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders signed a bill into law that dramatically expands the ability of companies to employ children under 16. The state doesn't even have to verify the age of children under 16 before they take the job. Oh, they don't have to verify the age. They don't have to verify the age with this new bill. By the way, and this is just a side note, Google the photograph of Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders signing that bill surrounded by the children and look at how happy those faces are. Are you being sarcastic? I am being very sarcastic. How old are the kids? Oh, they're like 11, 12, 13. Yeah, they look like they're being sent off to work. (laughs) Grim. Uh, In New Jersey, blue state, largely, Governor Murphy signed Assembly Bill number 4222 into law, which would uh, which would corporations which would allow corporations to employ teens to work up to 50 hours a week, lengthen the time between mandatory breaks and remove parental and school district consent to work. Say that last part again. So basically, the new bill would let teenagers work up to 50 hours a week. Okay. Lengthen the time between mandatory breaks. Breaks. So right now, if you have to take a break every two hours, right, it's every four hours, something like that. And remove parental and school district consent to work. How can that be? That the parents don't have to consent to their kid working 50 hours a week? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. But that is... I. I that is... What, that is ha- what happened to parental rights? What happened to... I don't know. Maybe they, I mean, maybe they're saying if a kid wants to work, they should be able to work, whether or not their parents want them to. Wow. Yeah. In Minnesota, a bill was introduced, and not very, signed. In a very democratic state. Yeah. So it's, it hasn't been signed yet, but this one's been introduced that would lift restrictions on hazardous work and extend work hours. Specifically, it would roll back requirements that bar 16 and 17 year olds from working in construction. Which, again, makes sense as far as if they have a labor shortage as far as construction workers, if they want younger to open it up for younger people with young, healthy bodies. Right. Like Gary. Right. Was it Gary? Yeah, it was Gary. Gary. In 2022, so this was last year, Nebraskans voted to increase the minimum wages from $9 to $10.50 by the end of the year. This year, a Republican state senator introduced a sub-minimum wage for workers aged 14 to 17 also called a youth minimum wage. Of how much? And maybe it goes back to $9. Oh, nice. I'd have to go look at the uh, the full article. Uh, in New Hampshire, lawmakers voted to extend work hours for teens, allowing 48 hours of work per week in the summer and 35 hours per week during the school year. The legislation also lowered the age to bus tables where alcohol is served uh, from 15 to 14. So if they if it was passed there, they would also be 14 like us. If it were to pass here Uh, in Ohio, man, this is there's a lot of these. We're probably going to fill the segment with the rest of these in Ohio. 14 to 50 year olds can now work up until 9 p.m. year round. Uh, GOP state Senator Bill Reinke blamed parents for stifling their children's careers. Quote, I'm concerned about that in the long term. Those kids who really want to do something with their lives, want to get a job, can still do it even if they can't get their parents to cooperate with them. So in this case, parents don't know best. I guess. I love how this gets cherry picked. Uh, really? But then uh, they say nothing can compete with Iowa. There, a Republican bill, which passed the Senate this morning at this was, so this was mid April. Uh, real, it passed at like five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Which passed this morning at four fifty two AM. Let's 14 year olds work six hour night shifts. 15-year-olds work on assembly lines, and 16- and 17-year-olds serve alcohol. One clause would permit teenagers to work in unsafe conditions, meat processing plants, mines, construction sites, if it were part of some educational program. Basically, an internship at a slaughterhouse. Oh, sign me up. And send me into the mines. And I guess, you know, because I largely think, to me... And if you disagree with me, 
844-96-PARTY. Would love to hear from you. For middle-class, affluent, upper-class kids, these laws aren't necessarily there to protect them. Right. Right? Like, if you are, your parents are secure, you live in a secure, like, a, a you have resources, you have a warm bed, and largely the choice to get a job is to teach you work ethic, to have some extra spending money. Like, these are not the jobs you're going to go get, right? Like, if you are in the situation where you don't necessarily have to get a job as a teenager because of your family situation, you want to get a job, or they are encouraging you to get a job. And the jobs you get are, like, the, a lot of the ones that we've heard, not all of them, but retail, some restaurant jobs, quiz, shop. quiz nose, yes. candy shop, lifeguard. These laws that we're talking about are to protect immigrants, poor people, poor families, because in the long, the long term versus short term, if you're a poor family, it makes a lot more sense in the short term to have your good kid not go to school and be on, a, and be and to be on an assembly line yeah. than to make sure they get any kind of education. And so this is, you know, in the, the name of freedom and letting kids work. And if they want to, they should be able to. I get it. We also still live in capitalism and young people are easy to exploit. <laughs> and so to be peeling back some of these laws and kind of like, justifying them along the way is exploiting potentially some of the most vulnerable kids among us. 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. Joe from Wapaka from the 920, making minors pick up the slack for adults being cheap in paying other adults is not the answer for Wisconsin, especially now with more schools potentially closing because of low enrollment. Imagine the enrollment and graduation rate of overworked minors after that. Good text. All right. Stay here. This is As Goes Wisconsin. We're all familiar with the three what's. What is it? What can it do for me? And what does it cost? At Country Financial, we can help you find the answers with insurance coverage to help protect what's most important to you, all at a price you can afford. So while you're juggling work and kids while trying to keep an eye on your future, we'll make sure we're one of the first ones there when you need us most. What should you do next? Call Matthew Holbrook, your Country Financial representative at 414-332-2137 and chat about your insurance needs today. 414-332-2137. The Civic Media team would like to say congratulations. More than 200 Wisconsin businesses and nonprofits are receiving a free advertising campaign through our one day million dollar advertising giveaway. If you missed out, our local sales team would still love to help you with your own campaign. Go to civicmedia.us and click on the sponsorship tab. Again, civicmedia.us and sponsorship. New and still growing, advertise today with the Civic Media Network of Radio Stations. Let Mike Cravello's Camera Center help you start your family photo album by turning your digital images into gorgeous 4x6-inch prints on Two for Tuesday. Buy one print, get the second free, up to 100 prints. In-store only at 181st in Blue Mound. If you can plan barbecues and weddings, you can plan to protect yourself from a natural disaster. Sign up for local alerts, prepare an emergency kit, and make a family communications plan. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Here's your updated forecast on the Shaw. Daytime highs approaching 47 this afternoon under cloudy skies with a chance for scattered rain showers. Winds out of the northwest 15 to 20 miles an hour. Lows around 31 tonight. Partly cloudy. Partly cloudy again tomorrow. Highs around 55. Turning warmer Thursday and Friday with highs in the mid-60s. Chance for scattered showers Friday. For Civic Media, I'm meteorologist Derek Height. Currently, it's 46 degrees. A progressive voice from Manitowoc to Janesville. WAUK 540 AM. Always streaming at WAUKradio.com.
Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. I am Kristen Bry. She is Jane Madnair. And we are much better weather today. Yes, it is. Than and, yesterday. And tomorrow's going to be beautiful and it's a good stretch coming. So we're heading in the right direction. Heading in the right direction and heading in the direction that you may want to go check out some of our beautiful state parks, which uh, now in partnership with some of our libraries, they're making it a lot easier and cheaper for you to do that because the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is expanding or has expanded their check out Wisconsin State Parks at your library program. Which is cool. Which is very cool. So basically is a program that provides library card holders the opportunity to check out uh, day passes to state parks, forests, and recreation areas. So starting yesterday, more than 160 libraries across Wisconsin uh, will make nearly 6,300 day passes available. So the passes... Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. The passes are valid for free single-day admission for one vehicle at any state park, forest, or recreation area where admission is required. Initially, it was a 1,000 day passes uh, at 20 different libraries, and so this is a much bigger program now. Great. That's great. We have such a wealth. We are so fortunate in this state to have the state park system that we do. I totally agree. And I realized I started because I was like, oh, like, what else? Is there any fun facts that we can announce? So like as we, we talk about this story and I think I've realized how few state parks have actually gone to. There's well, there's so many. Well, there's so many. But I mean, I don't think I've been to Devil's Lake since I was a kid. I don't think I've come. I've gone back since I moved back. Beautiful area. Um, I mean, obviously we have Lakeshore State Park in Milwaukee, which I've been to and spend time at, but some of the other big ones, I was like, oh, I, there's like a long list of prioritizing getting out and taking advantage of how many incredible state parks we have. Do you have one that you frequent or stands out to you? I, I would love to go back to Devil's Lake. It's interesting that you say that because I haven't been back there either in 30 years, but my sister and I, one of my sisters and I a couple of summers ago, did a road trip to Bayfield and the uh, Copper Falls State Park, which is on the way north, is just gorgeous. It's just, it's just gorgeous. And Journal Sentinel has an article for people who are birders. Ooh. Sheridan Park in Cudahy on Sunday, birders spotted a rare Flame-colored tanager. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing for people. I think who, I saw this. And it, it was like the first time this this ever. bird's ever been spotted in Wisconsin, right? Yes, ever. Do you think anyone tried to talk to it? <laughs> they should. After we talked to our caller yesterday, who said that birds will recognize you if you try and engage in dialogue, which they recognize if you, especially if you try to mimic their calls. Right. I, I talk to hummingbirds when they show up in my yard, which is we, as, as we established yesterday is perfectly fine. Apparently I'm not that crazy. You're not that crazy. Um, but certainly go pick out and check out, uh, a free pass. Cause it's like, it's one of those things where I feel like you have to, for me, I have to prioritize this as far as all right, what are we doing this weekend? Let's make the effort to go check out a state park and like be in nature and turn off our phones. Have you ever been to Pike Lake State Park? Mm -mm. See, that's outside of my hometown. That's outside of Hartford. Okay. It's not that far. It's only about an hour. Beautiful lake, beautiful camping. And it's a short, it's a short shot. You know, it's not like you have to be in the car for three and a half hours. Trying to think. We're going camping in July this year. I can't remember where we're going. I don't know which state park we're going to. But at least we're we're doing that. I now I now am married into a family of campers where we do that once a once a year once a year once a summer and that's plenty. Is so, that for for three days? It's for two. Well, it's two, two nights. Okay. We go we get there Friday and we leave Sunday. That's cool. Which is like the perf for me is the perfect amount. Yeah, I'm not a great ground sleeper. I'm trying to imagine you in a tent. I I did it. Yeah. When's the last time you did it? Thirty years ago. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm, that you like your your bed now. I'm old and creaky. <laughs> it's it's there's yeah there's a certain amount of comfort that that I want in order to enjoy myself. Yeah, and that that also lends itself to the ease with which I can reach a restroom. <laughs> or just you know you don't want to just poop in the woods anymore. I'd rather not do that. <laughs> 
Um, well, yeah, so we'll have to go check that out as far as maybe with some some state parks nearby that we can go spend a day in. What are your favorite ones? 844-967-2789. Best state parks in Wisconsin. Which is your fave? I would love to know because, again, we have so, so many to pick from depending upon where you are in the state. And I also feel like you have to figure out your your bucket list with things like this. Like high on my bucket list as far as Wisconsin outdoorsy things is the Apostle Islands. You'll love it. I So you've been. I have. Have you done the kayaking and like the whole thing? I didn't do the kayaking, but but I've been up there. Yep. Um, Because that to me just seems really special and beautiful. It is. Um, and I'm trying to think. I go back to the Cave of the Mounds. Haven't been done that since I was a kid. And they have events in the Cave of the Mounds now. Like what kind of they events? They have like musical events. Oh, and that's on the acoustics, I imagine it would be right? pretty, and pretty I, awesome. I, I believe there are also like wine tastings and and other things. So yeah, Cave of the Mounds, it's hip. Maybe we'll do that for a day for a, for a segment uh, of get suggestions on like, what is your Wisconsin bucket list? Specifically with outdoors, because obviously I think sometimes there's bucket lists of like go to a Packers game or some of the go, you know, state fair or some of the different fairs and stuff like that. But as far as some of our outdoor beauty, what what is on your list or what would you recommend for someone to have on their list? But if you have recommendations now, we'll start collecting the list. 844-967-2789. That is 844-96-PARTY. And uh, when we come back, top of the hour. We are going to be talking to author Dan Kaufman. So looking forward to this. Me too. And so I'm going to tell the the full story when we come back. But his book, which is called The Fall of Wisconsin, it came out in 2018. And there is a chance that As Goes Wisconsin would not be a thing had I not found that book. Wow. Back when I was still living in Brooklyn in 2019. So his book came out in 2018. I've found out about it in 2019 and it opened my eyes to what was going on in my home state after I hadn't lived there since 2003. And I'm not saying like that was the direct line to coming home in 2020, right? but it, it, it planted a seed. And so I am very excited to talk to Dan Kaufman, both about, I mean, that book's five years old now, but as far as the research that went into that, and then also where we are now and what he kind of assesses of as far as now that we're past the Supreme Court election, are we still falling? Are we rising? Are we stagnant? We'll talk to Dan Kaufman about all of that when we come back. This is As Goes Wisconsin.